Hello, I'm Mark, and this is In the Round on our Metro Bus tutorial series, part 13, Long Hair. While the underlying principles for sculpting long hair are essentially the same as for short, requiring the division and subdivision of the masses into interrelated sections, see part 12 of this series, the growth pattern of the scalp has far less influence on the sectioning. This is because the further hair extends off the head, the more it comes under the influence of gravity. Long hair behaves in accordance with its own material characteristics, its texture, weight, density of growth, etc., as they relate to its environment the forms around which it falls, hair products and accessories, wind, water, dirt, etc., and could plausibly take or be styled to take almost any form. Because sculpting long hair both requires a high degree of stylization and permits more freedom than sculpting any other part of the figure, it is, in some respects, more similar to abstract sculpting than figure sculpting. To sculpt it effectively will require more direct consideration of the elements and principles of 3D design, line, mass, texture, unity, variety, rhythm, etc., than sculpting the features requires, the forms of which are dictated by the underlying anatomy and which can be either correct or incorrect. If you don't have a basic grounding in the elements and principles of 3D design, I recommend a quick internet search. They are simple and straightforward, but provide a good framework for thinking clearly about three-dimensional objects of all kinds. Start building up the larger sections with your hands, ensuring that there is sufficient mass all around. Make sure these additions are well attached. If you leave too many gaps and unattached sections in the hair, it might fall apart during the hollowing process. Pay attention to how the hair curls around, falls over, or splits at features like the ears and shoulder. It can be a good idea to save sections that fall over complex features like eyes or ears for after final detailing is complete. Work your way down to smaller and smaller subsections, transitioning to loops, compression tools, and brushes to articulate them. Develop a rhythm of oppositional motion between the sections that suggests the weight and texture of the hair you're sculpting, longer and less varied curves for straighter hair, shorter and more active for curly. Establish the source, direction, and termination points of each section and subsection. Avoid abrupt changes in direction or motion without obvious cause. Using water, abrasion tools, and your fingers, refine the sections back, working the additions together. This will help to expel small pockets of air trapped in the clay. You may even hear them popping under the pressure, and will strengthen the hair for the hollowing process. Smooth out any uneven curves you detect. It's likely that there are many, particularly if you're sculpting complex hair, where the overall motion can conceal many small inconsistencies. It is generally easier to feel for these with your fingers than to seek them out with your eyes, and your fingers are almost always the best tools for correcting them. It's best to describe curves with a rigid hand and big, smooth motions from your shoulder or wrist, but you can rely on stiff bristle brushes where your fingers can't reach. As you work, try to maintain as much definition as you can while eliminating any ambiguous masses or curves. Though the sections will inevitably be less sharply defined after this refining pass, the relationships between them should be clearer. Rotating the bust, assess the proportions and the shifting relationships between profile lines as they eclipse each other. Do this from both high and low angles. Watch out for straight lines either in the individual sections or created by sequences of overlapping sections. Once all the curves are smooth and the clay well worked together, redefine the sections with compression tools, loop tools, and stiff bristle brushes. Note that between the tip of the finger and the back of the nail is an almost perfect 90 degree angle. You can use this to simultaneously define your sections and to articulate your curves. You can also try defining undercuts by carving deeply under the line of an overhanging section with a wood tool, then smoothing back with a stiff bristle brush. Recheck the proportions and the rhythms of the profile curves as you go, adjusting when necessary. Repeat these steps until you're satisfied with the sectioning. 
You can now take some time experimenting with textures if you'd like, but again, the final detailing will have to wait until after the bust is off the armature, which is what we'll be doing next time in part 14, removal, hollowing, and reassembly.